Kuzu Zangpo, welcome to Bhutan e-learning program. This is a biology lesson for key stage 5, that is for classes 11 and 12. I'm Mahindra Timsina from Deshin Choling Higher Secondary School. Before we begin with today's lesson, let me ask you two important questions. First one, we always say, I feel my heartbeat on the left side of my chest. Where is it actually located? It is important to think about. Second question here is about oxygen. We know when we breathe, oxygen is filtered in our lungs. We take in oxygen. However, we find it reaching to different parts of the body. For example, let us take our toes. So, how does oxygen reach our toes from the respiratory system? So, to get an answer for these questions, let us study transport system. So, before I introduce the actual topic, let us look at why transport system? We have been talking about substances getting transported from one part of the body to another one. So why is transport system important? Let me take an organ as an example. For example, lungs. As we breathe, our lungs play an important role in respiration. Exchange of gases occurs in our lungs. From the lungs, oxygen is transported to different parts of the body. Meaning, the cells throughout our body require oxygen. For that, oxygen has to be transported from the lungs to the cells in different parts of our body. So that's why, that's one important example to understand that a transport system is important to carry substances from one part of the body to the other part in order to ensure our body functions in a proper manner. So that's all about the importance of transport system. Now, in this lesson, we are going to talk about our transport system, the human circulatory system. Our system is also called as cardiovascular system. So, let us firstly look at the objectives. First thing, towards the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain the role of circulation in our body. Second one, you should be able to draw a label diagram of human heart. Third one, you should be able to name make a list of some substances that are transported by our transport system. And the last objective here is a prediction that you should make. So after studying everything, you should be able to predict what will happen if some part of the heart do not function. To begin with, let us look at circulation. So what is circulation. It is a process actually. A process which involves a body and something moving inside the body. So circulation here means if a substance inside a body moves again and again in the same path, then we call that as circulation. A simple example blood. Blood moves around our body again and again following the same path. So we can say circulation of blood in our body. As so to understand it better, let us look here. I have a plant cell and inside the plant cell we can see some organelles are moving. We call that process as intracellular circulation or in other words 
cyclosis. We see cytoplasm moves. So we can call that as a cellular level of circulation. However, on the other side, I have one simple representation of human circulatory system. And we can see it clearly that the blood is moving. It is circulating. It is going from the heart to the blood vessels. Again, it is coming back. So that is one good example of circulation at organism level. Now, let us move towards the human circulatory system or the cardiovascular system. So if we look at the cardiovascular system, it is made up of three components, the heart, the blood vessels, and the main substance that's moving, that is blood. So this class or this lesson, we will be talking more about the structure of human heart. Heart is a conical shaped structure. It weighs roughly about 300 grams and our heart is almost equal to the size of the fist. By the way, where is it located? I remember I posed one question about its location. So if we look at our lungs, in between the lungs, if you look here in this diagram, you can see on the lower part, in between the two lungs, there's one triangular space. We call that as mediastinum. Heart is actually located at the mediastinum. That is exactly at the center of our chest. And behind our the chest bone, which we call as sternum. However, we feel our heartbeat towards the left because the tip part of the heart is slightly bent towards the left. If you look here, in the left lung, there's one small depression called as cardiac notch. The tip of the heart is actually inserted in that cardiac notch. That's why we feel more pressure towards the left. So that's about the shape, size and location of the heart. So let us look at what protects the heart. There's one important protection we call that as pericardium. You can see heart there and then it is enclosed by one one cover which is shown by a transparent membrane there we call that as pericardium if you have to look at pericardium it is quite a complex membrane or a complex part the pericardium is made up of two components firstly the outer one the fibrous pericardium and the inner part is called as the serous pericardium. So the serous pericardium has parietal layer and a visceral layer. And in between the two layers, there's one, one small space, which we call as pericardial cavity. A small space. It is filled with a fluid called as pericardial fluid. Can you think about why is pericardial fluid important? We know a liquid has that ability to absorb physical force. And second thing is we also know heart beats continually with a high amount of pressure. So whenever heart beats, the pericardial fluid lubricates the two membranes and there are no abrasions there's no alterations actually apart from that it also absorbs a lot of physical shocks so that is that is about the pericardial fluid now let us move towards the structure of heart 
So let us look at this image here, the external structure of heart. I hope you can identify a few parts as we already studied about heart in our lower classes. We can see a few important things. We can see the chambers. We can see some blood vessels. So generally, external structure, as we look at the external part of the heart, we see three different components. First, we see depressions or, let us say, the grooves. We also see the chambers and we see some blood vessels. First things, the chambers. In the external view, we can see the, the right ventricle, the right atrium, the left atrium and left ventricles, which are physically very clear. And they are separated. The chambers are internally separated by some walls. We call them as septa. However, when we visualize from the external view, we see those, those partitions in the form of small depressions or grooves. So there are three groups. Firstly, you see the, the atria and ventricles, they are separated by one large group which we call as coronary sulcus. So in between the two ventricles, we can see there is, there is interventricular groove. And there is one groove called as internal groove, which is seen in between the, the, the right and the left atrial. So that was what we physically see directly as we look at the heart. Now we also know heart is connected with some blood vessels, which we call as the great blood vessels. So by definition, these are the blood vessels which bring blood to the heart or take away the blood from the heart. So these are great blood vessels. Firstly, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Those are two which bring blood into the heart from the body. Second one, the aorta, which takes blood from the left ventricle to the body. Third one, it is pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery takes blood from the right ventricle to the lungs and the pulmonary veins which bring blood from the lungs back to the heart. So these blood vessels are directly connected to the heart. That's why we call them as the great blood vessels. Apart from that, we can also see coronary artery and coronary sinus. Coronary artery supplies blood to the heart and coronary sinus brings the blood from the heart walls back to the, the atria. So they may not be included as great blood vessels, however, they can also be seen in the structure as we view it externally. So that's all about the external part of the heart. Now let us move into the internal structure. Before we move on, it is important to know about the structure of heart wall. We always say heart is made up of cardiac muscles. So let us look here to visualize how the heart wall is made up of. If we take a small part, we can see the heart wall has three components or three parts. The internal one is called as the endocardium. The middle part is called as myocardium. And the outer one is called as epicardium. The endocardium, which is shown here by a kind of bright color, 
It is made up of endothelium. It lines the, the myocardium on the inner side. The middle part, which is the thicker layer, it is formed of cardiac muscles. We call that as myocardium. And the outermost part is epicardium. It is the same one that we studied when we were talking about the pericardium. The epicardium here is the innermost layer of the pericardium, that is the visceral layer of serous pericardium. So that's about the structure of heart wall. Now let us move and look at the partitions or the septa. The chambers are separated by some partitions. So if you look at the first one, the atria which are on the top, they are separated from the ventricles. We call that separation, that partition as atrioventricular septum. The partition between the atria and ventricles. Second one, the left and the right ventricles, they are separated again by one septum. We call that as interventricular septum. And the third one, the two atria, that's the left and the right, they are separated by one septum, which we call as the interatrial septum. The wall between the two atria has a small depression called as fossa ovalis. So that's about the, the partitions inside. Now let us look at the four chambers. I don't think I need to talk more about the four chambers. Again, if you look, we have the left atrium, the right atrium, then we have the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The atria, we call them as receiving chambers because they receive blood. If you look at the, the right atrium, it receives deoxygenated blood from the body through vena cava. The left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs through the pulmonary vein. And they are receiving chambers. That's why their walls are thin as compared to the ventricles. The lower two chambers are called as ventricles. These are called as pumping chambers because they pump blood. They, they contract with higher force or more force. When a right ventricle contracts or during the contraction, the blood from the right ventricle is pushed or forced to the lungs through pulmonary artery. However, the left ventricle, as it pumps, the blood is carried to the body. It supplies oxygenated blood through the body, through one large artery called as aorta, or we can call that as systemic aorta. The right ventricle, the walls are a little thin as compared to the, the left ventricle. So later, you need to figure it out why. So that's all about the chambers. So if you look at the valves, there are basically two different types of valves. The first type of valve, we call that as cuspid valve. We call them as cuspid. Cuspid valves are located in between the atria and ventricles. They control the movement of blood from the atria to the ventricles. 
in between the right atrium and the right ventricle, there is tricuspid valve. We call that as tricuspid valve because it is formed of three leaflets, which we call as cusps. And in between the left atrium and left ventricle, there is another valve which we call as bicuspid valve. The bicuspid valve is made up of two cusps. We even call the bicuspid valve as the mitral valve. The tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve, both of them are connected to small projected muscles called as papillary muscles by tendon which we call as code tendine. The function of the tendons is they don't allow the cusps to open in the opposite direction whenever the ventricles pit. So during the contraction of ventricles, the cuspid valves, that is the tricuspid and bicuspid valve, close with quite a big force. And during their closure, a sound is produced, which we call as the love sound, that is the, the first sound of the heart. So if you look at semilunar valves, they are called as semilunar because of their shape. They are half moon shaped valves. So there are two semilunar valves. First one in the opening of pulmonary artery. We call that as pulmonary semilunar valve. Again, the pulmonary semilunar valve has three small pouches which are half moon shaped as you can view it here in the diagram. Secondly, in the opening of the aorta, there's another semilunar valve which we call as aortic semilunar valve. It also has the same three pouches. They prevent the backflow of blood from the arteries to the ventricles. So whenever the two ventricles pump, the semilunar valves open and blood is pushed into the pulmonary artery and aorta. However, once the blood is pushed, some blood try to force back. When they force back, the pouches are filled and the semilunar valves close with some force producing the second sound which is called as the dove sound. The second sound of our heartbeat. So that's about the heart. Our heartbeat is controlled by a tissue called as nodal tissue. It is actually formed by the modification of cardiac muscle. We call that as nodal tissue system or even the control system of our heartbeat. That's why we say our heart is myogenic in nature. Myogenic. Because the generation of heartbeat is coordinated by modified muscular tissue. So if you look at here, the nodal tissue system, it has firstly in the opening of the superior vena cava, there is a node called as SA node, the sinoauricular node or sinoatrial node. We call that as the pacemaker of the heart because every 0.8 seconds it will release one electric impulse which travels through the heart causing the contraction of the heart which we call as heartbeat. So it maintains that pace of heartbeat that's why we call that as the pacemaker. The second component is called as AV node. AV node. Atrio ventricular node which is located in the wall that separates the atria from ventricles. 
the atrioventricular septum. The atrioventricular node is an amplifier because the electrical impulse coming from the SA node, the intensity may decrease as it reaches down. That's why once the impulse reaches the AV node, the AV node will amplify it and further conduct it to the ventricles. From the AV node, there is one bundle coming which we call as the bundle of his. It comes down and it bifurcates into two smaller bundles or branches, the left and the right. The branches go down, they reach the, the, the walls of the ventricles and they further break into smaller fibers which we call as the Purkinje fibers. So this, the impulse for heartbeat starts in SA node, that is the sinoauricular node. It moves through the walls, comes down and reaches the AV node where it takes about 0.1 second. The AV node amplifies the impulses and it conducts it down through the, the bundle coming down to the branches and ultimately going to the Purkinje fibers getting distributed throughout the heart wall. So as the impulse moves through the AV node and the bundles, it takes about 0.8 second to reach the farthest fiber. So transport system forms a major pickup and delivery system, meaning it picks something from one place and it delivers it to some other place. So it is involved in transportation of gases, transportation of food, food transportation of waste and most important one is also distribution of heat. It brings heat from the hotter part of the body and then distributes it to the other parts maintaining a constant body temperature. It also has some important role to play in maintaining the chemical balance in the body which we call as homeostasis maintaining a balanced internal environment. Apart from that, blood is one important component of the transport system and it is also one major player in our immune system, the body's defense system. So that's all about the heart, the transport system. So I guess you have learned quite a lot now. So before I end up, let me ask you some questions. The first question, we know the blood pressure of our body is constrained throughout. So how is our circulatory system able to manage it? Can you explore on that? The second question, as I was teaching about the ventricles, I told you, the left ventricles have thicker walls as compared to the right ventricles. Why is it like that? The third one, so can you predict the consequence if AV node doesn't function? How would that impact our body? Circulation important for human. That's all for today. Thank you.